All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. We got week number six, Thursday night football. Seahawks taking on the 49ers in this one. In this video, I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props. I think I have three as of right now that'll send your way. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video for all of my final plays. In terms of last week, Thursday being the only good week, the rest of the week... We are owed a womp womp there. Um, this is our first negative week in the NFL through five weeks, so I guess we can't be all that mad about it, but still leaves a terrible, terrible taste in our mouth. So I want to be better this week. At least do what we did last Thursday for this Thursday night game. So before we do that, guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I can't believe we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Like, that sounds crazy to even say out loud. But if you are new, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. And let me know what you guys are all rolling with in the comments down below. There's a lot more people in the comments that are smarter than me. I'll tell you that. So make sure you guys are showing some love to some of those plays in the comments as well. But let's jump into this one. We got Seattle at home here, three and a half point dogs. Um, total sitting at 47 and a half. Seattle is three and two on the season, one, three and one against the spread. San Francisco coming in at two and three, both straight up and against the spread on the season. Seattle coming off a tough, tough loss to the Giants. They lose 29 to 20. It was realistically like 23 to 20. Um, Seattle had their field goal to potentially send it into overtime. They had that kick blocked, and then the Giants took it back um, pretty much like as time expired. Inspired, right, And San Francisco is also coming off of a pretty bad beat themselves here against Arizona. Arizona marched down, kicks a field goal to go ahead late in the game. Then Brock Purdy, um, I think it was like a minute and change left. Don't quote me on that. But anyways, moving the ball down and his elbow hits a helmet of an opposing player and he throws a pick and game over. So two teams come, coming off of bad beats here. Let's kind of get into both of the breakdowns of each team and then I'll give you my uh, my spread lean and then we'll talk about the total and like I said some player props coming your way as well but starting with Seattle I think if Seattle's going to hang in this game to cover or even win it outright it's going to come down to both the offensive and defensive run game um, right now they're the fifth best team in terms of DVOA rankings from an offensive rush perspective going up against San Francisco who has kind of been spotty they're actually ranked 17th in terms of rush DVOA defense fifth overall so obviously they're good against the pass but not so much against the rush and we've seen some like I said shaky numbers against some running backs against them week one Brees Hall didn't look fantastic still rushed for 54 yards and a touchdown week two Jones and Chandler on Minnesota combined for over 100 yards I think it was like 114 Week number three, Kyron Williams puts up 89 yards and two touchdowns. And then their one sort of saving grace week is against the Patriots. Um, reminder, Stevenson didn't look all that great. No one really did. But again, that's kind of the Patriots. Like, do we really want to put a nice little flag on the 49ers um, side of things and be like, oh, look at them. They shut down the Patriots. Not so much. And then last week, James Conner, 86 yards, just under five yards per carry. So uh, I think if there's a way to beat or at least compete with the San Francisco team, it's not necessarily passing the ball. It is running the ball. Now, that being said, the type of running is very, very specific. They're really good against zone runs. Um, that's inside zone or outside zone. But when they have sort of man schemes and whatnot, they can kind of get chewed up. Now, that's important because Kenneth Walker specializes and, and actually has been doing really well in these man scheme runs. I think it's like an 82 yards per carry this season so we'll see if the Seahawks kind of use that information wisely and give Kenneth Walker um, give him some runs in space same thing with Charbonnet his his numbers go up as well so if that's the case I do think that Seattle can use the run game to keep up and kind of maintain and, and control the rhythm of this game and to potentially keep it within a field goal there as they are getting three and a half points on the other side of the ball I would say it's the exact same thing they need to be able to control the run game um, San Francisco's Jordan Mason has looked pretty good so so far this season, but um, when you look at why, it's it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe it's not all that great, right? You do have a top 10 defensive DVOA team in Seattle. In the last three games that Mason's had to run against, or at least San Francisco's had to run against, Rams, Patriots, and Cardinals. That is the 30th, 24th, and 23rd ranked team in terms of um, rush EPA. So I don't necessarily think that they've had much competition. So this could be the best run defense they've seen in nearly a month. You know what I mean? So if the Seahawks are able to absolutely dominate both sides of the run game, offense and defense, I think that that's their lane to a victory or a potential cover in this spot. Now, if we flip it over to San Francisco, um, from a pass perspective, this is the number two team in the entire league. From a passing DVOA perspective, Brock Purdy has been pretty steady. I know I talked about his interception to close out the game last week, but this is a quarterback that, you know, 
for years now has been doubted. He just doesn't make mistakes. He allows that offense to go. And obviously they do have some weapons. Ayuk, Debo, Kittle, Yuan Jennings. You know what I mean? Like they do have a lot of passing weapons here. So he's in a good spot. Um, and Seattle's pass numbers, I wouldn't necessarily uh, write home about them. I mean, you look at it and you say, oh, they're seventh in the league in terms of passing yards per game. That's great. But the first three weeks were cakewalks for them. Um, they went up against Jacoby Brissett and the Patriots, then Bo Nix and the Broncos, and then Skylar Thompson and in Miami. We finally saw two viable quarterbacks go up against them. Daniel Jones uh, last week, we'll get to that in a second, but Jared Goff um, being probably the best quarterback they've seen, and he's had a, gr- he had a great game against them two weeks ago. 292 and two touchdowns. Um, Daniel Jones, who I just mentioned, again, viable is the word I'm using. I'm not trying to say he's good. Jared Goff, definitely better, but Daniel Jones even, 257 and two touchdowns. Brock Purdy should be able to do what Daniel Jones does, you know what I mean? So I think that through the air is where San Francisco has an offensive advantage here in this spot. Um, one thing to note is that Seattle uh, sends a lot of blitz. I think fourth most, uh, excuse me, ninth most in terms of frequency. They sack the fourth most, and then their pressure rate is in the top five or six as well. I don't think that that should really shake San Francisco. Um, they've been decent against all of those, at least from like being good to slightly above average this season. Um, and even if it does, uh, Brock Purdy, fourth best quarterback in terms of completion rate against pressure this season. So hopefully he can find guys quick and and make some completions because I do think that that is um, how they can get to them. Again, they have plenty of weapons um, and I not that it's a true weakness, but the way to beat the Seattle team is going to be through the air. I don't necessarily think it's on the ground. Um, even though they might be looking at Jordan Mason's number saying, hey, go torch him up and, and cut him up, I, I just don't necessarily see it. I think that this is a passing game for Brock Purdy overall. Um, and that kind of leads us into the spread lean here. I am going to lean towards who I think is actually the better team, um, though the record may not display it, but I think it is the 49ers. Um, if we were to get this one, I don't really like three and a half. I'd look for a three, which it's been played. Plenty. Even at the time of recording earlier this morning, it was at three. So I'd look for a three or maybe buying a half point to a two and a half to keep it to win in that field goal range. The three and a half kind of scares me, um, especially if Seattle is able to keep it close via the ground game. You know what I mean? So um, give me San Francisco here minus, I'd say three or minus two and a half. And honestly, I think the biggest thing is, and I talked about it when we talked about the Seattle and Detroit game, right? Uh, Monday night, a couple of weeks ago. I just want to see this Seattle team perform when tested like their three wins have been against not that great of ball clubs they finally play a good one in Detroit and Detroit smacks them and they should have had a bounce back performance last week against New York and they don't you know what I mean now you can make the argument that they're at home here and in that type of thing but guess what They were at home against New York as well. So uh, I just don't see it. There's too many question marks on the Seattle side of things for me. If we flip it over to the total, um, kind of interesting because uh, I'll say I do like the over. I think that line's fairly high, um, but I am going to lean towards the over. You have both of these teams um, that are top 10 in terms of offensive plays per 60 minutes. Seattle is the top team in terms of pass plays per 60 minutes, which obviously that's going to lead to more points. The clock isn't always running. Um, They're the fourth fastest team in terms of seconds per snap. That being said, it kind of gets taken back a little bit because San Francisco is the third slowest. Um, but Seattle runs a lot of no huddle. San Francisco doesn't. But again, I kind of like the over just given the fact that, one, San Francisco should be passing the ball maybe more than they have normally in this game, or at least I believe that that's their path to victory. So San Francisco passing the ball with a Seattle team that plays fast, no huddle, seconds per snap, all that type of stuff, just seems like it could lead to the over. And what I will say is we haven't even talked really much about Metcalf, Smith and Jigba, and Lockett. It's like if Seattle has to pass the ball, They also have a lot of weapons to be able to do so as well. So um, I like the over in this spot. Keep an eye on the pinned comment to see what or if any of that we end up leaning or, or, excuse me, rolling with as a final play. If I had to rank it, I'd probably say San Francisco, you know, minus that two and a half or minus three, and then the over. And then we'll get into a couple player props here. But before we do talk about the player props, guys, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite player prop apps out there, and it is Underdog Fantasy. If you guys do want to check it out, that link is going to be in the pin comment you're gonna get up to a thousand dollars in a deposit bonus and we've talked about him a brock purdy free square 0.5 total yards you could throw that into your slip and just boost the payout guys and again in terms of payout up to a thousand dollars in a deposit bonus like how great is that you know what i mean so use that link in the pinned comment it's also in the description if you don't know what it is it's a player prop app you combine two or more player props into a slip based on their more or less projected number and then the more you win the more you get paid out 
It's a great app, guys. Go check it out and use this Brock Purdy square. Um, I'll be posting some probably on my Twitter as well, some underdog slips for this game. So go ahead and check it out, guys. That link, again, is in the pinned comment. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some player props. First one I'm going to look at here is George Kittle over 48 and a half receiving yards. Um, I don't mind any of the receivers um, on this side. Obviously, I said I think it's going to be a pass heavy game for San Francisco, but George Kittle, I think, is going to be the move. Um, you could see that Seattle, oh, okay, they're pretty good against receiving yards defense, right? 10th best team, just 205.8 per game, but you go over to the tight end position. 28th, so 5th worst, and then they're allowing 57.2 receiving yards per game to the tight end. Now, that you can make the argument is skewed um, by Hunter Henry and whatnot, but overall, I still do think this is a good spot. We've started to see Kittle get more and more involved, so this season... 40, then he had 76, 45, 64, but even from a target's perspective, like he's had a healthy dose at least four in every game, and the one that he had four, he had four receptions, right? So uh, I don't mind this spot. Um, he had 12 targets last game. I think that that's a little bit, you know, too much to ask for, but if he gets, you know, six targets, reels in for them, we should be looking at a floor of 40 yards, and that's, again, very low. That's the fewest amount of receptions he's had all season already, so our floor of 40, he can't get one or two more catches and make up that eight and a half yards. Uh, I think he can. I've even looked at his over four and a half receptions. It's plus money right now. Again, some value here just given the fact that, well, they're decent against receiving yards overall, or excuse me, receptions overall, but against the tight end, just 24th ranked, right? And even his floor, four and four in these games, four and a half, one more grab, we're going to get plus 116 odds over on FanDuel and most books. Like, seems like it could be a good spot for Kittle, right? So keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if we do ride with something of George Kittle. I'll put it in the pinned comment along with the odds and obviously the play that we are rolling with. But guys, by the way, if you are looking for the tool that I'm on right now, now, it is outlier. You could filter to all of the games, look at all of the player props, see their last five, last 10, head to head this year, last year hit rates, and everything like that. Like Tyler Lockett, if we wanted to dive into that, you could see his hit rate, you could see his head to head this year, last year, all of these great stats, target percentage, red zone percentage, great stuff, guys. And I have a seven day free trial link in the pinned comment and in the description. Try it for seven days if you don't like it then don't worry about it. No skin, no skin arm, no blood arm, whatever the saying is, right? Go check out Outlier, guys. That link is in the pinned comment. My favorite player prop research tool out there. Um, next one up, I already mentioned, I think Kenneth Walker could have a good game. Um, I'm actually going to flip it to rushing and receiving yards, though. His receiving yards line is at 18. His rushing yards line is at 56 and a half. Yes, it doesn't seem like we're getting the best of value in terms of bumping that up to rushing and receiving, because if you add those together, it's not all that um, the same. But overall, you could see, I said that if they go with a man's skin, I think Kenneth Walker could have a good game. And look at this. Fifth most receiving yards allowed to the running back position. Kenneth Walker has been getting a decent amount of targets, right? Five and eight, 13 targets over the last week. Even from a target perspective, um, he's getting nearly 10% of the targets. And that's with a lot of guys that demand targets, right? So if you like that spot, um, you might even want to consider. In fact, we can probably find it here. Um, we can look at Charbonnet who has been getting targeted a lot when he's in. We just don't have lines out for him. Actually, now we do. That's great. So his receiving yards line at 13 and a half. He's hit this in seven straight games this year, four straight games. And again, we're kind of eyeing in on that. In terms of targets there, look at him, five, four, five, five. He's getting tons of targets, fourth for the team. So I don't mind his receiving yards. It seems like he's in there for a lot of pass plays as well. Now, one last player prop again, guys. I've said it 10 times. Keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where all these final plays will live. These are all spots that I like, but what I bet myself, if you do want to go ahead and fade me, those plays will be in the pinned comment, right? Uh, Juwan Jennings, over 28 and a half receiving yards. His reception line at two and a half. I also like for nearly even odds. Um, this is a Seattle team that has a decent secondary, but he's going to be matched up with Witherspoon. And I think that he's going to be a little too shifty for him and get open. And they've struggled against the slot receiver this season. So I like the idea of a guy. Yes, he's kind of fallen off last week, but he's still second on the team in terms of targets just behind Brandon Ayuk. Um, and this season, averaging 4.4 catches per game, receiving yards averaging 75 obviously has the big play potential which I like in this case so you look at last week and you're like 13 yards that looks terrible right four targets just one catch that just wasn't all that um, great of a game we have more good to look at this season than we do bad so um, I'm not shying away from this one I like Jawan Jennings over 28 and a half receiving yards as well as his over two and a half receptions and guys that is going to wrap up for what we have in today's video if you made it this far go ahead and comment 14 because you made it 14 minutes more than 14 minutes into the video 
And if you haven't yet, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Definitely go check out Underdog and Outlier. You pair those together, you're going to be printing those dollar bills. So go ahead and check it out, guys. But all those links are in the pinned comment as well as my final plays. That's what I got for you guys. Let's bounce back after a... You know what of a week five. Week six sounds good to me. Let's start it off with some bangers on Thursday night. We'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.